G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. And as usual, I've underestimated how long it's gonna take me to finish this job. So what I've done with part six, I've broken it into two sections and both sections have been uploaded. Section A, I'll finish off the outside of the box, cut the box lid off, make the inserts for the inside of the box, and then we'll move on to section B. What I'll be doing is making a stand for the box doing some router work on the lid and doing the flocking. So please enjoy part six, section A now. And if you want to continue on the journey, by all means, look at part six, section B. G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass, and welcome to the final episode of the Hexagonal Box. I've taken all the tape off, and as you can see, after a bit of a debacle, we've now got quite a nice box. Inlaid leaf, inlaid into a cabochon shape oval, inlaid into the lid, solid edging all the way around, solid edging on the base. So what we've got to do this episode is smooth all this off, plane these edges on the side of the box, finish off the top, cut the top off, put some inside lining on the box, and I'm going to introduce you, if you haven't done it before, to flocking. Then the box will be ready for finishing. So let's go over to the vise. Normally I put water in the vise. But in this particular case, because I've got inlay and I've used hide glue, I'm not going to do that. Grab a block plane and plane these flat. Many times I'd use a router with a profile cutter, but because of the complexity of these hard edges being made up of solid timber and veneer, I'm not game enough to use a profile cutter when they're this wide. When they get down to nearly flat, I might choose to do that, but we'll see how we go with the planing. A little bit of candle grease on the bottom of the plane works wonders. And as I've said before in previous shows, normally if I'm doing a lot of planing, I'll put grease or wax on the back of the plane as well as the toe. In this particular case, I'm only going to do it on the toe. The reason being, I haven't got that much to plane off and I don't want to be dragging grease over a surface that I might have to finish. And where I've torn out here, that's fine at this stage because I'm going to cut that back later. So I'm taking it down to oh, within about a 64th of the sides. Oh, and while I'm here, yep, we've got to fix this little bit of tear out I had when I had a bit of a slip on the saw last week. But last week, I don't want to repeat last week. That was, that was not a fun week. But yeah, I learned a lot. And by the way, thanks for all the supportive messages that I've got through email and through YouTube. Yep, it was a mishap, but perhaps the box is going to be better than if we'd stuck to the original plan. In fact, I do have one that I stuck to the original plan on, and I'll show you at the end when we compare the two boxes. Keep on just checking the depth to make sure that um, you haven't gone too close. That's pretty close, but it's up a bit here, so I'll just take a little bit more off the back. Yep. Okay, that's good enough. That's starting to look pretty good. But a little bit more to go on the edges. 
but I think what I'll do is sand those and I've got to get this glue marks off here, which I'll most likely use a cabinet scraper on. Again, cork block, plywood face, 100 grit, hold it in place, stretch it over, get rid of that belly. And now just give it a bit of a sand. Okay, that's starting to look pretty acceptable now. I've still got little glue marks just along here and here. What I'm going to do with that is use a cabinet scraper. And that's pretty much okay. I'll get the rest of those when I finish sanding it off. Which actually I might do now. Again, starting with 120. What you're aiming for <coughs> is just to lightly sand the surface. You don't want to go too far because you'll actually have a join in the top of your box, but you'll have the corner a little bit off center. So it's just a question of be mindful what you're doing, keep checking, and don't spend too much time on one side. Because I've already sanded the edge and I don't want to mark it when I have it in the vise, I'm using a wooden dog. It just gets in the tail vise, dogs come up, block of wood there. Just drop it in. Give it a bit of a tighten. Where it's high, I'll just knock that off with a plane. Just don't forget I've got veneer here. So I can't really hook in as hard as I'd like to. Again, a bit of 100 cork block. And gently, remember not to go through here, just focus on the edges. Now I won't go all the way through the grades. So I'll go 180 and then 240, leave it there. Because this veneer I'm working on here, it's actually 0.3 of a mil thick. So I haven't got much to play with. My uh, woodworking mentor, if you like, Jeff Hanna. He used to say to me when we were working with veneer and doing marquetry, you do what you like with it, put it through the thickness, of, put it over the joiner, you can plane it, you can sand it, but don't you remove any of it. It'll give you an idea. You haven't got much to play with. Two forty, and that should do us. And go in this case, go with the grain of the veneer, so we don't have any cross grain scratches. It's the lightness of touch. Now we can start working on the face, and if you could feel that, it's got a lot of undulations in it. So what I'm going to do is very lightly sand it and then I'm going to put a filler on it and let that dry and then bring it back. And if you want to know the full process of how I make my own filler and fill it in, go to the e-workshop at Woodworking Masterclass, sign up, free membership, and I'll post a video there of the entire process of grain filling this top part. You'll notice what I'm sanding, I'm actually going around. I'm not just going one way. The reason for that is, of course, we've got six segments here, plus we've got various grain directions of the leaf in the inlay. So by 
sanding in all different directions lightly, better you take four times as long and get it right than get it done in a hurry and mess it up. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with all the sanding on that. Now what I've got to do is fix this up. And what I'm going to do is go over to the router and use a core box bit. And if you can see that there, the core box bit actually has a rounded piece on it. I'm using a smaller one than I've got here, but it's already in the router so I can't show you it, but it's about a 10 mil. And I'm going to gradually creep up on this mark here. And unfortunately, I haven't got a camera on the router. Anyway, I don't want to get too nervous. So I'll be back and we'll see. And let's hope it's not a repeat of last week and it works out fine. I've done three passes so far. We're nearly out of trouble. Just a little bit more to go there. But what I could do at this stage if I wanted to would be actually make a little wedge of timber and put it in there and fill it up. Maybe use some putty and fill it up. But quite frankly, I want to go a little bit deeper um, so we can really get it out and I'll show you how to totally fix a mistake up without using artificial means. Now because we've cut such a large section out of here, when you put it down, it does look a little bit out of balance. So what to do, we'll make a base, which I was going to make anyway, and we'll accentuate this waste or curve if you like, that we've got here. So the box will come down, come out, and then I'll have a cove over here. I'll round over the top. But at the moment, I'm gonna take the top off. All right, one box, nicely cut off. Take this masking tape away, and you'll find it hasn't got any nasty bits of chip out. Then it's a question of making up the timber to go inside here. Now I also said I was going to flock on the inside of this box. I'm going to have a solid timber insert that will then hold the lid on, but I want to flock the bottom and I want to flock the inside of the lid. Not the sides, just the inside. So in order to do that, this is flock by the way, it's a rayon dust if you like, and very, very fine. But to put it on, you have to get a colour that's a little bit dark. If you can't match the colour of the flock exactly, get one that's just a fraction darker than the flock you're using, and then when you put the flock on, you won't notice the darkness underneath. But if you use a slightly lighter uh, paint than the flock, it will definitely show through. So what I'm going to do here, just get these dags off, is I'm going to put a coat of paint on the base and just under the top. What I'll do is put some masking tape around the inside on these edges because I only want the flock to go in this area here. Okay, so as you can see, I've now got masking tape all the way around the inside. I'm not worried about the base so much because it's going to have solid timber lining all the way. So we'll just see the base of that. Now the colour I've chosen is, is a little bit darker, as I said, than the flock that I use. And you just paint it on. You can use acrylic, but I think enamel seems to work a bit better. I've just got one of those throwaway sponge brushes, which aren't all that brilliant, but it's getting the job done. Try not to get any lumps in it, if you can help it. Not so important on this first coat, but it's definitely important on the second coat, because the first coat you can clean it up later on. Right into the corners. This could use a little bit of thinners in it actually. It'll get the job done. And there we go. So it's painted on the inside. While that's drying, I went away and I've machined up 
this Spanish cedar. Now it's machined down to about five mil. It really doesn't matter the thickness, but if you go too thin, when you cut the angles on it, you'll find that it'll start to break away. Five mil works for me. The other reason I like five mil is what I've got here is a bullnose bit. With this five mil board, it fits nicely into this bullnose bit. Like that. And if you don't have one of these bullnose bits, it really doesn't matter. You can use a plane, a block plane, to put a leading edge on, or you can wait until you get it all in the box and then just sand a leading edge with a piece of sandpaper. And the reason you want a bit of a leading edge is so the box top can be guided on and fit nicely on top. So what I'll do, go over to the router and I'll just run this piece of timber with this bullnose bit to get the round over. And then I'm gonna set my saw up at 30 degrees so I can cut all the pieces I need to go around here. Now some of you might say, well, it's a hexagonal box. Shouldn't that be 60 degrees? Well, it is. If you get two 30 degrees together, you end up with 60 degrees. Back in a tick. And there I have six pieces all cut. Now to put it together, just simply place them inside the box. And there you have the inserts. Obviously, they're too big. If I put this on, they're way too big. So I've got to cut these down to the right length. How I do that is measure from, actually before we do that, what I'll do is flatten these tops off. Should have done this before. If you can see that, you can still see the rough saw marks on it. So we'll just clean that up. Let's take this tape out of here. And there they are, the top and the bottom, nicely smoothed off here on the edges. I think I'll have a five mil lip coming over the top of this box. So the measure from the bottom to this edge is 47 mil. So if I go 52 mil for these, that'll be just the right height. So I'll just pop over to the table saw and cut these at 52 mil from there to the top of the round over. And there they are, cut to length. Place them in the box and we'll see how it looks. Push down nice and hard, get the lid, Pop it on. And there we have a box. So what we've got to do now is flock the inside, flock the inside there, which I'll do. And then I'll show you how I make the basic stand, which is the stand I would have made on this box had I not had the mishap. And at the end, I'll show you what this box should look like on the stand and then the stand I've made with this box, and then you be the judge of which one you think looks nicer. Well, that concludes part six, section A. Now in section B, I go on to make a stand, a basic stand for the box, do some router work on the lid, and do the flocking on the inside. So please join me in part six, section B.